Hey everyone, this is Raz from Just Mad, and together with me, I have Anna. Hello. And today, in this video, we're gonna round up the top 10 questions we get all the time about remote design sprints. And we're gonna try our best to answer them, obviously. To make things a bit more interesting, we're gonna keep each answer under 30 seconds because we do like to talk a lot. Oh yeah, we So, do. let's go. You go first. Okay. Here we go. Question number one. What are the best tools for running remote design sprints? There are a lot of options out there and we have different tools depending on the activity type or the stage. Um, what I strongly recommend is to start with an online collaborative tool. This is basically your playground. We use Miro because it has all the features that you need. And then for conference calls, we use Zoom. Uh, next up on our list is Notion. Um, this is where we document everything and we track our tasks. Um, for the testing sessions, we use usertesting.com or um, if you want to have like guided sessions, then uh, you can use something more lightweight conferencing solutions such as Hangouts or Whereby because you don't need to actually install them. And then uh, obviously we use Figma for prototyping and lastly, uh, for scheduling calls, we have World Time Buddy and Doodle. Next question. Okay, next question. How do you keep people engaged during a remote design sprint session while you're in the calls? Uh, when working remotely, it's so much easier for people to get distracted. The best tip I have is to make sure that participants understand why they're here and what's expected of them. If people feel their opinions matter, uh, they'll be more focused and more engaged. Uh, if you feel like the energy is going down, you can you know, start applying some energizers to, you know, to bring the energy up. But make sure that people have something to do, so they're not just staying around. This is particularly important when doing storyboarding, for example. And make sure that you have enough breaks in, be in between sessions, giving people a chance to refresh. Okay. Do you, train, do you train people on how to use tools like Miro? Yes, we always do a 20 minute training session where people um, get to discover Miro basics like navigation, creating sticky notes or uploading images. Never assume everyone uh, is familiar with these tools because they're not. So we found out this the hard way. We would typically show them how to do basic actions and have a short exercise for them. So for example, you can ask them to upload an image with their favorite vacation place and add sticky notes, uh, we know writing some text explaining uh, why they liked it so much. And the next question, ooh, okay. How long are the work sessions usually in a design sprint? This is gonna be an easy one. Uh, one single end-to-end -end call will never exceed two hours. As mentioned before, giving breaks in between sessions is critical, especially when doing day-long workshops like a design sprint. Uh, we have this formula. If you have a 40-minute or one-hour session, we give a 15-minute break afterwards. Um, if you have a two-hour session uh, in one go, then probably you can give, let's say, 30-minute or one-hour uh, break after. And last question for Anna. What are some best tips for first time facilitators? Mm -hmm. Without any doubt, the most important one is to prepare, prepare, prepare. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. And uh, we actually made a full video uh, just on this topic, so you can check that out. There should be a link on the screen here somewhere. Um, using a template is super useful as it takes some of the hard work off of your shoulders. We linked our mirror template in the description below, so you can actually check that out. Uh, another useful tip is try to do a dry run of the session. Uh, this, this is gonna help you a lot. Basically, you're gonna iterate the exercises and practice your speech. Another one is to stay organized, communicate as often as you can with your team and try to collect feedback as soon as possible after each session. Um, another one is, <laughs> I feel like DJ Khaled, another one. 
So another great idea is to write down all the things that could go wrong and try to anticipate certain scenarios. So for example, someone might say that their microphone is not working mid-session. Um, so one way to avoid uh, this is by doing a tech check or ju you know, just make sure that everything is in place just before the workshop starts. Okay, so the first question that I have for you is, how do you handle prototyping remotely? Well, prototyping 30 seconds, crazy. Well, okay, so what we do first and foremost to make sure we get things done is we break the prototype into chunks and get the most critical parts done immediately. I'm talking about the critical screens. Uh, then in terms of tools, it depends on how many people are working on a prototype. If it's just one designer, you just pick whatever they want and they feel most comfortable with. If there's multiple, we use a tool like Figma uh, to collaborate live. And we also use UI kits simply because it just speeds up your workflow. Next up, we have how do you accommodate people in different time zones? Okay, so the best case scenario is when your team members are within a zero to four hour time difference. This would be Berlin and Paris or London and Barcelona. Uh, this is really the easiest way to align calendars. It's, it's really straightforward. But for example, when you have people who are in between five and now nine hours in terms of like the difference of where they are, things can get really tricky and you really have to make sure that you're not scheduling people either too early, like 5 a.m. or too late. Uh, a great example would be Berlin and New York, for example. Uh, and then you have the most extreme cases where you have in between nine and 12 hours difference. This could be uh, Mumbai and Seattle, for example. And in those scenarios, we really want to do different sessions and then kind of combine all of the results. Next question, how do you sell or get buy-in for design sprints? This is actually a huge one. Wow, this one is solid and hard for 30 seconds. Okay, so the way we do it as a consulting business, we ask our client how long would it usually take to do this project normally? And then we ask them how much would it cost them if it were, were to go wrong? Like what if the solution that they come up with is not accepted or adopted by their users or customers? Uh, basically ask them what, what happens if it would fail. Through this, we make them realize the, the benefits of the sprint. So namely being user-centric, doing really early validation, uh, kind of getting customers inside the, their world of their solution and, and really quickly gaining the confidence to move forward. And uh, what we typically do, this is a really interesting trick that works like 90% of the time, is we run a, a mini workshop with them for free to give them a taste of the sprint. And one example of these workshops would be the Lightning Decision Jam. Next question is, how do you handle concept sketching remotely? All right, concept sketching. Uh, the way we make this work is we actually let people do it offline, not while they're inside a call. So we give them clear instructions on what they need to do. Uh, we provide them with a clear deadline by when they need to send us their concepts. And we typically ask them to work on paper and then send us the images so that we just take those and populate the Miro board. So, um, uh, one, one other thing that came to mind, like some people don't want to do paper, but they just take an iPad uh, and, and just like an iPad like, like this and an Apple pen and simply just uh, start sketching out their concepts, which is also super, super awesome to see. Uh, what we try to do to make sure that people are getting work done is we regularly check in with them and that's pretty much it. And last question, what project or challenges are suitable for a design sprint? Okay, this this question is so uh, so that like, comes up so many times that we're actually going to create a separate video just for this. So people are going to have a new video. So if you feel there's not enough answers here, don't worry, we'll we'll treat this separately. But uh, we typically look at a challenge from three different dimensions. You have urgency, you have importance, and you have the number of people involved. Those are the main th dimensions that we look at when we try to assess whether the sprint is the right choice. Um, a few examples of challenges that, uh, that, that could work for a sprint from the top of my mind would be uh, improving an onboarding flow, for example, for a digital product, uh, creating a landing page for a new product launch or a marketing campaign, you could have redesigning an existing solution that's been, I don't know, in backlog for a long time, uh, validating a new concept before uh, actually starting to build it, like an app, for example, or refreshing a checkout experience for better, better conversion and, and upselling, for example. That was it for this video. And if you have more juicy questions about design sprints, drop them in the comments below. And if you find this video useful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get notified whenever we launch new videos. See you in the next one.